What's going on guys? Back with another video. Okay, so in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about how I used uh, DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats to, to eventually or ultimately get out of debt, save some money inside, and even uh, invest a little bit of money. And um, to be completely honest with you, this took a lot of sacrifice. Um, it took a lot of time. Um, this wasn't an overnight thing. It actually took about, I want to say three and a half to four years, almost. Um, took a lot of hard work. There were a lot of days where um, I didn't have much of a social life. I was working, um, but now I'm, you know, I'm enjoying the fruits of it. And uh, that's why I wanted to, you know, uh, make make a video about it because I know a lot of uh, uh, a lot of my followers on this channel, gig workers, and, you know, we're all kind of trying to do the same thing. We're all trying to, um, you know, uh, maybe, maybe save some money for a vacation. We're all trying to, you know, save money for an emergency fund, retirement, whatever. We're all trying to generate revenue to, to achieve some type of monetary goal, right? So, um, the, so the way I got to gig work was I've explained the story, but, um, I'll explain it again here on the channel. But, um, so I got into gig work, uh, around 2017, I think it was 2018. Yeah, I was closer. Yeah, it was about 2018. And uh, basically, I was working nine to five, and I was looking for a second job at night, uh, you know, to, to make some extra cash on the side, and uh, you know, started chipping away from my student loans because I had about thirty thousand dollars in student loans with with um, Navion. And uh, if you guys aren't familiar with Navion, they serve. I think they only service of federal loans. I'm not sure, but anyway, the the um, I had federal loans, which basically means that you're in debt with the government indirectly <laughs> um and i didn't want to live like that for the rest of my life because you know the government the fed is they're very powerful they can uh you know garnish your wages and do all kinds of stuff to you that you're not gonna like if you don't pay if you don't make the money if you don't pay the minimum minimum payment right um and so um i, I said you know what i'm gonna make a plan um i this, this is when i actually came across dave ramsey um you know like like many people um dave ramsey helped me yeah, I don't really follow his financial advice and other stuff. Um, I also still use credit cards, but uh, my behavior with money has changed thanks to him. So I give him credit for that. Um, and also I live a minimalist lifestyle now. So um, that really cut, helps me come back, cut back on spending. So um, so I still use credit cards, but I pay him, you know, every week um, or whenever I get the direct deposit from the uh, from, from the app. So, uh, so yeah, no issues there. But um, basically watching Dave, Dave's videos uh, got me really fired up. Um, you know, it helped me accelerate the debt payoff process. So, uh, you know, I was working nine to five and then, um, I, like I said, I was trying to find, uh, originally it was a W2. I was trying to find something where you know, I could work, work from six to 10, six to 11, go to bed and do the same thing over the next day, right? Go, go to my first job at nine. Um, but the problem was that everywhere I applied restaurants, um, I, I even got, uh, it's funny because I'm in sales. I don't have any food, food industry or food serve at the food food service industry experience. Um, but I still got an interview at Starbucks, which I thought was pretty funny. And then a lot of restaurants, especially fast food restaurants, they're calling me, you know, um, you know, trying to interview me, but, um, that's not the point. The point is that, you know, a lot of them, you know, the ones I did interview for, they wanted me to work until midnight or 1am. I said, Hey, I can't do that. I gotta, I have another job. I gotta be at at nine in the morning next day. Um, and I said, Hey, can you, can you, uh, can I work until 10? They said, no, the shift, uh, the shift, if you're working at night or the shift that they wanted me to work, um, uh, they wanted me to work, um, is, um, it ends or it goes through 12, 12 or midnight one. It's a closing shift, right? So you have to be there until, until the store closes, take the trash out and all that good stuff. Um, and I said, schedule wise, that's not going to work out. Oh, by the way, um, I'm wearing my, uh, my friend, Jason, if you guys know, know Jason Thierry, uh, he sent me his t-shirt, um, check out his podcast um at the geek economy podcast is shirt hopefully it's coming out on video it looks like it is check it out great podcast um if you look on youtube uh either google jason tier or the gig economy podcast and it'll come up they go live every other wednesday at 5 p.m pacific or 8 p.m eastern so check it out really good podcast um and thanks to jason for sending me this t-shirt um but um so yeah i uh the place i interviewed i, I wasn't gonna get i wasn't getting anywhere because they wanted me to work late and um so i i knew i needed something more flexible and that's that's when uh, i, I kind of came across uber eats uber eats was actually my first app and i worked for, i worked it you know uh during the holidays of 2018 i believe and um you know things i was i was doing deliveries i was doing lots lots of deliveries but a lot of people weren't tipping and this was before um you know you were able to tip from people who worked uber eats know that uh when they first came out 
or the first couple years of them, you know, being being on the market, uh, you couldn't tip the driver before delivery. You had to wait after delivery. So basically, the way it works is that people would place orders, um, and then once the once the order was delivered, um, Uber Eats would say, "Hey, don't forget to rate and tip your driver." But at that point, people didn't care because they had their food, right? Um, so yeah, I was doing if uh, I was doing lots of deliveries. I would say about one out of four customers tipped, if that. Um, only small number of customers tip and I got fed up with it because I was, you know, putting all these miles on my car. I wasn't driving far. Actually, no, I, there were some places where I did drive far because back then Uber Eats didn't tell you where you were going, right? They, they didn't show a destination, they didn't show mileage. All you would see was just, was just the, the amount of time it would take you to, to get to a restaurant. So like it was like four minutes, McDonald's or five minutes, Wendy's, whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it got really frustrating. And after that, that's when, you know, one of my friends told me about DoorDash and, um, I signed up for DoorDash and never looked back uh, because the thing I liked about DoorDash is that um, even though this is, you know, when they were stealing tips, you could see where you were going direction wise, um, the mileage, a lot of things that Uber East didn't have at the time. So DoorDash for me was a game changer. Also, you know, I I didn't make I didn't make a lot per delivery, but um, there also weren't as many drivers. So if I went to Chipotle, by the way, this is before Chipotle got on all the apps. Um, I think they're exclusively on DoorDash before. Um, so yeah, so you can easily get, you know, go to DoorDash, you get a stacked order for, you know, making 11, 12 bucks going only a couple of miles. I dash into college town, so a lot of you know, college students um, ordered Chipotle. So it was really easy, you know, to take a couple of Chipotle orders and, you know, go into the same neighborhood, essentially. Uh, so, yeah, that was really good money. But I kept doing that for, you know, a couple of years. I worked DoorDash a lot. Um, I'll sign up for Grubhub later on. And uh, I, I was just working. I was working my nine to five job. I was, I was doing food delivery at night. And I was, I was also, um, you know, I was, I was a vendor rep for, uh, for, the largest uh, electronic chain store in the country. Um, so I did that on weekends. So overall, it's making pretty good money. But here's the trick. Here's here's what really helped me get out of debt and save money on the stuff, uh, put money aside. It was, it was my spending. Um, for me, at that time, I was you know I was I had the privilege and I was blessed enough. I had you know um, the opportunity to move back in with my parents after going to college, and that's what I did to save on rent. So I helped them own the house. You know, I, I paid them a little bit of rent and uh or whatever you know whatever they asked me to and um i just kept plugging away my student debt right um i you know whatever whatever i didn't spend i just kept throwing money at it and um i think i think it took me about six or so months to get a student student loan debt because i was just i was i was working seven days a week but i was spending very little money right if i if i didn't need it in my life i didn't spend it so just bare minimum so like basically rent bills uh utility bills whatever and then food that's pretty much it i didn't really buy any clothes unless i needed it unless like something ripped but yeah every i was just working my ass off six uh, seven days a week. it was actually seven days a week um and uh you know i i would take you know days off here and there if i needed it but uh for the most part i was working seven days a week because and i didn't mind it because i was just so determined on getting out of debt right uh, I, I was just so focused i had a tunnel vision on getting out of debt because i knew uh, once I got debt, my life, you know, would improve, and it has, um, you know, it's changed for the better because now I no longer have to worry about those minimum payments. I can, you know, whatever money I make now, I can, I can either put it to emergency fund or invest it. So, um, even if you're not in in a six figure debt like I was back then, um, you can still use if you work a W two, you can still use DoorDash to, you know, uh, put together an emergency fund, um, or maybe even. Uh, you know, use some money to invest. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I does not financial advice. Um, I'm not telling you what to do with your money. I'm just, you know, sharing my experiences on how these gig apps have helped me. So, um, you know, uh, don't don't take my word as gospel, essentially. Um, uh, but yeah, so yeah, these gig apps for me, they were a blessing and they still are. Um, now, now I, you know, I'm lucky enough to do it full time. Um, and uh, yeah, um, full time, part time, you know, depending on my financial needs at the time but um but yeah these you know as, as much as we as much as we rag on these uh these apps you know they're the flexibility you can't beat that right yeah it's not going to make you rich right i think a lot of people know that um that you know going to work in these apps you're not going to get rich it's more about the flexibility and honestly you can't put a time you can't put a, a dollar value on flexibility you work whenever you want and then you let's say you you don't need a lot for the for the week right you only need a little bit or you have a lot of plans you work a little bit that week but let's say next week you need to, you need to catch back up financially maybe you have a lot of expenses that week or maybe uh you know you have more expenses coming up so you can work more so i think the flexibility is a real attraction is a real job with these gig apps um 
but you know, for me, it was, it was just getting out of debt and uh, it, was, it was just getting financially ahead. And I'll be, you know, I'll be eternally grateful because if it wasn't for these apps, I'd most likely still be in debt. I'd still, you know, I'd be, I'd be paying it off. I'd make a headway, but not as quickly um, as I would have been if they weren't here. So, you know, thankfully I'm debt free now. And, um, you know, I'm glad that, um, I'm glad that, you know, these, these apps helped me help, help me get there. But, you know, the main reason why I wanted to make this video is because, um, you know, if I did it, you can do it too. So hopefully, you know, this, this video kind of motivates you or inspires you to go in, in the right direction that you want to go to. Um, you know, if you're, if you're having a hard time, you know, making money on these apps, you know, seek some of the content creators who do ride alongs or, you know, make tutorial videos or give tips and tricks. My channel isn't really about that. <clears throat> I can, I can do it if I wanted to, cause I've been doing this for four, about four years now. Um, I have a ton of experience, um, but at the same time, I don't want my channel to be about, you know, mainly about DoorDash, Grubhub and Uber Eats. Um, I'll make videos here and there, you know, sharing my experience or my, my thoughts maybe, but um, this isn't really tips and tricks channel. But if you guys do have questions about, you know, these gig apps or related to them, you know, you can always ask me in the comment section of this, vi of this video or any of the, my videos. I'd be more than happy to answer them if I can. Um, but again, um, use these apps, use these apps while, this, while they're here. Take advantage of them. Get, get financially ahead. Um, you know, if you think you're you're financially set or if you think you're in a good place financially, you can always make more, right? Um, because especially with, you know, things going on in California, I'm in California. So, um, you know, there's there's talks about Prop 22 ending and all of us becoming employees of these apps. And also, I'm going to I'm going to ride these apps until until um, the wheels fall off. Right. I'm You know, if, if we were to become employees, I, I just don't see myself doing working these gig apps any longer. I don't want to take orders that I don't want to. I don't want to take orders that, you know, I don't want, I don't want to take, you know, some of them maybe, you know, high mileage or maybe some of them are going to neighborhoods that I don't want to go to. So, um, so I just don't myself, I don't see myself becoming an employee, but, um, take advantage of these apps. Um, you know, I know there's more and more States coming out with laws like, um, uh, like uh, Massachusetts is a big one. They don't have any laws yet, but I, I heard that, you know, there's wheels in motion, you know, for something similar to AB five or prop 22 over there. Um, Illinois, and there's a couple other states, you know, there, there's talks about more and more states um, adopting, you know, something similar to AB5 or Prop 22. So take advantage of it while you still can, get ahead while you still can. These apps, as, as knowing as they are, they, they really are a blessing. Um, you know, whenever, you know, it's frustrating when these, get, when, these, when, when these apps go down or when customer tip baits us. But, you know, I feel like those, those are small things, you know, those are minor things. When you look at the bigger picture, these apps give us flexibility, whether you want to work full time or if you want to do something on the side because you have a W-2. Uh, maybe, maybe you want to keep your W-2 because your market isn't busy enough or maybe the tips aren't good enough or maybe it's just not consistent enough where you feel like you can make a living but that doesn't mean that you can't work these gig apps so keep going to take you know just do what you can you know even if you make 40 50 bucks a night if you work five days if you work okay so like let's say you make 50 bucks a day right 50 bucks a night let's say you work nine to five like a traditional w2 let's say you work uh you get out of work and you start working from six to nine or even six to ten um or let's say let's say you get out of work and you start dashing depending on where your market is you know, okay, like let's say you start working from 5.30 to 9.30 or 6 to 10, right? That's four hours. If you make 20, 25 bucks or actually, um, okay, let's say you make 15 to 25 bucks an hour because that's, um, you know, that's, that's usually what I hear, 15, 25 bucks. If you work four hours, there's no, there's, there's no reason why you shouldn't be taking home $50 a night after you take out gas and all the, all the other expenses, right? So if you work five days a week, 50, making 50 bucks a night, that's 250 a week and that's a thousand dollars a month. I mean, who couldn't use an extra thousand dollars a month right now, right? And again, you, you don't you don't have to be doing this for the rest of your life. It could just be temporary to get financial aid, to, to get financial aid. Maybe you used up some of your emergency fund, you know, for something a couple months ago, and you know you want to replenish it. That's really good. Or maybe you need money in your retirement. Maybe you didn't you didn't save up enough for retirement in your twenties or your thirties. I'm I'm in my early thirties now, so I'm actually trying to catch up to my retirement because I didn't put anything into my twenties. But um, but yeah, so. Um, take advantage of these apps while I'm still here, while they're here because you know don't take it for granted because you know with with the way law and states are moving it seems like you know a lot of these apps we're gonna be required to you know become employees for them or even if we don't become employees I think they're gonna try to make us you know accept orders that we don't want to take because we see it every day right like DoorDash they they change their um, uh, their completion rate. Re completion rate rating requirement to 95% to get early access schedule. So now if you don't have a 95% or higher, then you can't get early access to your schedule uh, to work. So, uh, you know, 
I, these apps, they changed the algorithm every day to, to, to get us to take all these garbage offers. So, um, so I definitely recommend taking advantage, taking advantage of us, you know, while I still can. I know, I know I said that a lot, but that that's how important this is. Take advantage of it. Um, again, if you guys, um, if you guys, um, missed my video from yesterday, the one about, um, about spending less and saving more that's where you know the, the gig economy can really help spend less and use the economy to make more money um and then you know just set more money inside because you never know you might get deactivated you might have car problems you never know what's going on with these gig apps they're a blessing but also the, um you know they're they're almost like high risk high reward so uh let me know let me know what you guys think of this video let me know in the comment section below also if you guys enjoy this video don't forget to smash the like button um that that help that tells youtube that you guys enjoy this video and it'll help push it out to other people who could potentially benefit from it as as always guys i appreciate you guys watching thanks so much and um yeah again if you have any questions concerns comments let me know in the, in the comment section and um I'll, I'll respond to you in the best way that i can catch you guys in the next one peace